أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله الأمين محمد ابن عبد الله وآله وسلم السلام عليكم رمضان مبارك وكل عام وأنتم بخير The month of Ramadan is indeed the best month that the Muslim can achieve success for the hereafter in This is because Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has given us the example of maximizing our worship in the month of Ramadan. He said in a beautiful hadith, قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم رمضان أوله رحمة وأوسطه مغفرة وآخره عدق من النيران. Ramadan it is beginning, is mercy, it is middle, is forgiveness, and it is end, is salvation from the hellfire. This hadith can become the best guide for a Muslim who want to maximize their profit in the month of Ramadan. What does it mean, Ramadan awaluhu rahma? Ramadan it is beginning in the mercy because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows the Muslim during the first 10 days of the fast to work as hard as possible to restrain themselves from something they were used to for the last 11 months so that they can benefit themselves with that fast in order to maximize their worship. Hence, it is more important at the beginning of Ramadan a Muslim should show respect to everyone that they meet while they are traveling, they are studying, they are working. It is so important that they help one another. It is also important to realize showing mercy is by looking after one another, caring for one another. For example, your parents, you need to get in touch with them. Your children, you need to do something good for them. Anybody you meet, anybody you talk to, you must do that. And the mercy also should not just extend only to those whom you know or you love or your family, but to everyone and everything. Even the animals should be shown mercy. And the month of Ramadan is a time whereby mercy is shown in abundance by sharing with those people who have not. Especially when we say one of the wisdoms of fasting, we are fasting to feel the feeling of those who have not. But subhanAllah, those who have nothing, they are not waiting for something to come to them. But we are waiting for iftar and we know what is coming our way. In fact, we have more than before Ramadan or after Ramadan. So here, inshallah, if we can share our food, feed people, invite people to eat with us, uh, make sure our neighbors, okay, especially in a land like England, whereby the neighbors could be not Muslims. This is a very beautiful time because the Prophet said, Islam is sharing or feeding the food, sharing the food or feeding the food. So, if we can look, knock the door of the neighbors and say, look, we are fasting in Ramadan, would you like to have this kind of food shared with us? Alhamdulillah, that would make a big difference. The middle, the forgiveness, which has already started, SubhanAllah, yesterday was the 11th, and today the 12th, Alhamdulillah, nearly finishing. It's a time for forgiveness. All of us want Allah to forgive us. And indeed, Allah says in the Quran, Allah Allah lakum. Raising the question, wouldn't you like Allah to forgive you? Wouldn't you love Allah to forgive you? We will all say yes, we would love Allah to forgive us. So if we love Allah to forgive us, in order for that forgiveness to take place, we must find it to forgive other people. We must find it. It is so sad, we live in an age whereby everything is easy, but when it comes to relationships, it's becoming very difficult. Children are not talking to their parents, parents are not talking to their relatives, and everybody is in turmoil. In the Quran, which was revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Laylat al-Qadr 1400 years ago, Allah described the hypocrites as those who severed the link between them and the next of kids. We need to make sure that we will not do this. We will make sure in these 10 days of the middle of Ramadan, before we ask Allah to forgive us, we will forgive everybody who wronged us. And the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لن يرد علي الحوض لن يرد علي الحوض He will not come to my fountain الكوثر The one who will not accept the apology Of those people whom they have wronged him You must accept it Somebody come and say I'm sorry Alhamdulillah Because Islam is about forgiveness In fact the Quran is there وليعفو وليصفحو They must forgive and make up the relationship Better than before inshallah So these are days we need to strive In fact seeking forgiveness is a beautiful thing because we are sinners. It is the first who says, كل ابن آدم خطاء. Every son of Adam, daughter of Adam is a sinner. وخير الخطائين التوابون and the best of those who sin are those who repent or turn to Allah. So this is time to repent. And he says in the hadith صلى الله عليه وسلم, يا أيها الناس, 
تبوا إلى الله فإني أتوب إليه في اليوم مئة مرة. أو يوم أن كان تنتو الله فور أي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم تنتو هم every day a hundred times. So we need to seek forgiveness. A hundred times is nothing. There's a great scholar called Ahmed Tijani, رحمه الله عليه ورضي الله عنه. He says seeking forgiveness really to get the sweetness of it, you should tend to Allah every day a thousand times. If in the time of Allah Sallam, the companion needs to say, say Astaghfirullah a hundred times, we need to do it a thousand times now because our time is more complicated and difficult. We are facing too many problems. So inshallah, that will be the best for us. And seeking forgiveness, not just for ourselves, for those whom we love, for those whom we wronged, for those who wronged us, and for everybody. It's a very good thing to do, inshallah. This is all to prepare ourselves for the entrance of the last 10 beautiful nights in which Rasulullah says every night there is 70,000 people whom Allah will forgive. 70,000 people will be forgiven. 700,000 people by the end of Ramadan, not a million. I mean, remember we are 1.2 billion living now. How many billions lived before? So if you want to be the lucky one who will hit the jackpot to be given that opportunity to be to struck off from the book of the people who are going definitely for the hellfire, then you need a special entrance. This entrance, the Prophet did it by i'tikaf, seclusion, in the mosque, cutting yourself totally from the dunya. Why? Because, subhanAllah, I keep reminding people who are not fasting from the haram, who are fasting from the halal. But while we are fasting from the halal, in the first 10 days of Ramadan, our tongue will indulge in chit-chat, gossip, backbite, spreading rumors, wicked words, slander, whatever. And, and our hand are all over the place, our eyes are all over the place. So we are not really controlling ourselves from the haram. And this is sad because the Prophet ﷺ says, if a person spent his day doing that which is forbidden by Allah and he fasted, he gained nothing from the fast but thirst and hunger. رُبَّ صَائِمٍ لَيْسَ لَهُ مِنْ صِيَامِهِ إِلَّا الْجُوعُ وَالْعَطَشِ Perhaps there is some who fasted, someone who fasted, Restrain themselves from the halal, but gaining nothing from their fast except for hunger and thirst. Who are they, Ya Rasulullah? He said it clearly those who indulge in that which is forbidden during their fast. We remember the great story of the two يعني, ladies who were gossiping while they were fasting when the Prophet was told or told about them. He called them and brought a, a, an ina, a vehicle or a vessel, and he asked them to vomit in it, and they could see the flesh of the companion. Because Allah said in the Quran, and when you back by, you are eating the flesh of your dead brother. Astaghfirullah So here, the seclusion becomes paramount, cutting yourself off. But we live in a day and an age, many people cannot get time off from their work to have a seclusion. What they can do? They should at least seclude themselves for an hour every day. Reflecting, muhasaba, self-evaluating, judging, weighing, as it is said, hasibu anfusakum qabla an tuhasabu, Judge yourself before you are judged and weigh your deed before they wait for you. The muhasab for the righteous good men and women, those whom Allah describes as Ulul Albab, is every day. After Asr, after Isha. After Asr for the day and after Isha is for the night. They do total muhasab, looking after what they have done from the morning to that moment, thanking Allah for the good and taking refuge from the evil and asking for forgiveness for that which is wicked and bad. And therefore, if we can do it in the last 10 minutes of Ramadan, it's good. Mama Shafi'i said something beautiful. May Allah reward him. He said the i'tikaf could be entering from one door of a mosque and exiting from the other. If you are too busy to sit down in the mosque, just enter from one door. Before you enter, make intention. And, oh Allah, I'm entering by the intention of i'tikaf. By the time you exit from the other door or gate, you have done i'tikaf. This is to make it easy for people who are unable or those who make excuses for themselves so there is no excuse. Brothers and sisters, Ramadan is a time of maximizing one's reward, one's good deeds, so that Allah can be pleased with us in the Day of Judgment. We prepare ourselves so that we can win the night of power, if we are lucky enough to have it. We prepare ourselves so that when we finish Ramadan, we receive the ja'idah, or the present from Allah, Laylatul Eid. Don't be neglectful when the night of Eid, and Eid is declared, you think that's it. No taraweeh, no qiyam. No sahur, and then you forget about everything. Remember, that's the night where the gift is given. If you waste your time, you lose everything. They say there are three other nights besides Laylatul Qadr which are very important. Laylatul Eid, Laylatul Fitr, and Laylatul Adha. 
I might have read the Fitr, I might have read the Adha. And the night of Mishaman, this is a night we look forward to, to ask Allah and to give us the fear in them. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow everybody who's fasting this year to take notice of this and to worship hard. And on the night of Eid, pray hard, ask Allah to accept and to forgive that which you made mistaken. And in the morning of Eid, by the way, when you wake up, you pray your Fajr, then you go and have your ghusl, you dress in fresh new kind of clothes, and then you break your fast with something before you go to the Eid prayer. Go with one road, because there are malaika who are recording you, go to the Eid prayer early, sit in the front, don't sit and talk and gossip, takbir. Okay? Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, la ilaha This is the dhikr of the jama'ah. The Prophet said, dhikr, in Eid, in Hajj, okay? Always, the bayk, Allahumma, the bayk, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, this is the dhikr in jama'ah. Today we do it regularly, differently, but people think, oh, it is bid'ah, not bid'ah. Dhikr in jama'ah, in congregation, is the sunnah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa and the Eid is the evidence for it. And it is beautiful. So, do the dhikr with the jama'ah. When the Imam stands up to do the khutbah, then leave. Listen to the khutbah. Because it's a time of advice. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did it, and the companion listened. Don't rush. Allah said in the Quran about those who rush, فَإِذَا رَأَوْ تِجَارَةً أَوْ لَهْوًا إِنْفَضُّوا إِلَيْهَا وَتَرَكُوكَ قَائِمًا When they see a business, or fun, or a game, they will sign, they leave you, you are standing talking, to go and enjoy themselves. That's not good. Listen to the Imam. When the Imam is finished, we thank him for his job, and his advice. We congratulate everybody. And we say, Al-Eid Mubarak, wa kullu amantum bikhair. Then we go from a different road to come back to our family. But a reminder, we should not just come home empty-handed. If we have a partner, we bring them flowers, chocolates. It's not haram, by the way, to bring chocolate and flowers for uh, your family, your wife. Bring them and bring gifts to your children. And that's the best thing, because Eid is about celebrating. قُلْ بِفَضْلِ اللَّهِ وَبِرَحْمَتِهِ فَبِذَلِكَ فَلْيَفْرَحُوا هو خير مما يجمعون. Say in receiving the bounty of Allah or receiving His mercy that that they should rejoice in and celebrate. May Allah allow us to always be celebrating and rejoicing. We have already received the mercy of Muhammad Sallam in the Holy Quran and in this beautiful religion. May Allah grant every one of us success and salvation and give us to fear here and hereafter and grant us peace and security. جزاكم الله خير كل عام وانتم بخير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته